right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Big Data London. It's day one, and look who I have with me, Shane, who's the field CTO at Monte Carlo. Super excited to chat with Shane about various topics today, data quality, data observability, and much more. And I'm kind of also excited to learn a little about what's happening at Big Data London. Uh, I know you've been uh, busy with customers, you've been busy with prospects, you've been talking to a lot of leaders out here. Sure. So Shane, just for our audience, uh, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do at Monte Carlo and uh, what's happening at Big Data London? Sure. Thanks, Ravit. Yeah, I'm uh, Shane Murray. I'm the field CTO at Monte Carlo. Uh, previously a data leader myself, I led data at the New York Times and at Monte Carlo, my role as field CTO a lot of the times involves meeting with customers, understanding their data strategy, what are their highest level objectives and priorities, right. and how do we deliver value against that strategy. Um, and so, uh, in addition to that, I actually lead the customer success organization. So I'm basically the post-sale partnership for, for a lot of our customers. Fantastic, and uh, what have you been hearing about data observability, data quality? I know you all are we all have been the category leaders in the space uh, and uh, things have evolved over years. Sure. So I'm kind of curious to learn from your perspective, how has data observability uh, evolved over the last few years? What changes you're seeing and what's happening right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say at least when I joined the company, which is about two and a half years ago now, uh, a lot of the problems we were facing were fundamental ones. Right. Pipeline breakages, you know, late data coming in, and really problems that were within the data team, mm. right, but were related to their complex infrastructure and how Monte Carlo could provide early warning signs that allowed engineering teams to respond quickly to those problems. So it was really about speed of response, being ahead of your data consumers in finding fundamental issues. I'd say that's still part of the problem, but a lot of the analytical environment for data teams has matured. And typically what I see with our customers, some of whom I've met here uh, today, we have Roche here speaking, we nice. have Skyscanner, we have some really good companies that are here speaking uh, at this event. Very often the breakthrough for them is a data incident that's not necessarily just about your infrastructure, it's actually about business processes upstream that you've been able to identify issues with through the underlying quality of data. So, so that kind of leads me to where the space is evolving. One is we do way more than we used to in the quality right. dimension. We used to talk about freshness, volume, schema, quality. Quality is a huge dimension and so the larger companies we work with, there's a lot of work we're doing to ensure quality at the source and through their pipelines uh, and ensure that it's consistent and, re and fit for use for data teams. Um, I think the other thing that's evolved is just the extent that we're integrated across the enterprise stack. Yep. We just announced uh, an integration with Dremio. We continue to build into this enterprise stack and provide this idea of end-to-end -end observability. Right. That used to be your Snowflake or Databricks and maybe your BI tool, and now it might extend into Kafka or into a Postgres database, right? Really getting that end-to-end -end view of the stack. Um, and then, of course, you, you have uh, the Gen AI evolution, which comes with its own quality and reliability challenges that we're addressing. Exactly. No, those are fantastic insights, and thanks for sharing that. That's one of the things that I've been also chatting with a lot of enterprise leaders out there, and this is one big problem that they kind of feel you know, they are going after, they want to, you know, solve these kind of challenges. And, you know, recently I remember we did like a Gen AI summit in, uh, it was a small meetup that we organized and I, we had like almost close to, I would say, 10 speakers presenting for 30 minutes and uh, there was so much uh, around Gen AI. But one thing in common that I always saw in every slide was data quality. Mm -hmm. So it kind of comes back to data quality when you're kind of talking about Gen AI and then that is something what you all are solving first and then you know obviously also yeah. getting into the Gen AI space. Okay, that's uh, pretty interesting. I'll just tell you, yeah. I mean, there's a, a few dimensions on that problem. Yeah. The one that I initially started talking to our customers about, they were interested what Monte Carlo was doing with Gen AI, which started off by being, all right, how can we help you build monitors on your data? 
we've released recently released some features that actually recommend monitors to you based on based on understanding the profile of your data. So it's right. making it easier for data teams to to get kind of full coverage of quality. But then I think what's more interesting and important is how we support that Gen AI stack. Mm. And so for some customers already, we're supporting RAG pipelines, oh, wow. fine tuning pipelines where they might be building a chat bot and they are fueling that with their own customer data. Similar, you're going to need observability on that customer data right. to understand the, the reliability of those pipelines, the accuracy, and how you can ensure you're feeding the LLM with reliable data. Very and important. And then we're branching into areas like unstructured data um, and, and also LLM observability. So these are areas that we're continuing to explore. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, also kind of thinking a little about the future. I know you mentioned about, uh, you know, obviously what you're kind of exploring next, but how are you kind of looking at data observability, data quality in the future? What have you been thinking about? How it's going to shape up? I'm kind yeah. of curious and I'm pretty sure the audience would love to know a little about that yeah. as well. Uh, it's a good question. I think at a product level, one of the things that we've been very focused on and as I lead the, the customer success organization, also focused on enabling, is not just, I, th I think for many data teams, you know, a year back it was about how do you alert to these incidents before your customers alert you of them. Yeah. But really this thing scales in big organizations when you have a really strong incident management workflow. Yes. And so very often we're coming in starting with do you have the right ownership structure and accountability for data within the organization? You know, large organizations, who owns the data products? Who's accountable for the quality of the domains? And so very oftentimes it starts with a conversation about ownership and establishing clear ownership. And then how do you determine coverage standards for data that can go across many domains and, and many data teams, many data products, starting usually with what I think of as foundational data products. Yes. Those that might serve hundreds of use cases, and then moving into the more derived, you know, business specific use cases. Um, and then, as I mentioned, do you have a, a good incident response process set up to handle incidents? Because without that, it's going to be noise to you, mm. right? And so you need to be triaging, highlighting your SEV 1s, your SEV 2s, and then actually applying the right SLA to respond to the different type of incident. The, the other area I'm just seeing with a lot of customers come to the fore, mm -hmm. many of our customers have catalogs for enabling discovery yes. of data. Yes. So how do you actually push out the Monte Carlo signals into that catalog to say, you know, this data is fit for use right now? Yeah. Or there's a warning, there's a current incident on this Very data. important. You, you need yeah. to avoid it for now. So I'd say our, our most mature customers are, are really pushing out that data quality signal through their catalogs. Fantastic. Those are fantastic insights, uh, Shane. And uh, quickly also wanting to know a little about uh, what's next at Monte Carlo. Yeah. Uh, what can we expect next? I know Impact is kind of coming very soon. We'll get many more announcements that would be announced. But anything that you would like to share with the audience? Well, I, I mentioned the, the work around Gen AI. Gen AI. I think that's that's kind of fundamental to we see how we see us supporting both your analytical layer as well as as well as your machine learning and AI layers. Yes. Um, we've been re releasing a ton of features around around the actual quality of data, which I, I alluded to, um, and then we've got a ton of new quality reporting that's that's up and coming. So. Probably likely in the next few months we'll have some releases there that are super interesting. Can't wait. And I, I think it responds to this demand of sometimes it's governance teams, sometimes it's executives, but how do I report on the progress of, of these initiatives? And also how do I think about you know this critical machine learning product and what quality that's at or what reliability level that's at? Yeah. So being able to communicate that to stakeholders we think really builds trust and is something we're investing in. Very excited about what's next that's coming up for Monte Carlo. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, one last question for our audience is, if they want to reach out to you, is LinkedIn the best place? Where can they reach out and learn more about, uh, you know, yeah, what you do? Yeah, I'd, I'd say you can find me at uh, Shane Murray on LinkedIn. Awesome. Or 
uh, smurray at montecarlodata.com if you want to go to me directly. But yeah, awesome. please reach out. This is great. Thanks for uh, you know visiting the Robert Show. Thanks for chatting. It was such a pleasure chatting with you and uh, learning more about what's happening at Monte Carlo. Yeah, thanks, Ravit. Thank really you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.